Thanks, Alicia. Hey, guys. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining class today. It's um, one of my favorite ones that we, we have uh, in the lineup for uh, 2022 so far. And so um, what I like about it is how versatile it is and gemstones, right? So um, any gemstones you like, um, these glamorous stones are really beautiful um, imperial jasper. And these are the ones in the handout. And I've combined them with uh, the John Bead check seed beads in this beautiful iris brown color, which has a bunch of sparkly brown. And there's even like some blue hues and green and purples, which pulls out some of the really intricate earth tones in these, in these stones. So um, the whole idea for this class is to show you just a really fun way to turn seed beads into a chain. Oh, thanks, Felicia. Yeah, so um, what is on the mat here? is two different palettes. Um, this is the Jasper palette. And it's of course with the, uh, with the brown iris. And it's got what looks like a little chain inside. So that's what we're doing today. We're just, we're gonna learn how to stitch this. But of course, like all of these great ideas with seed beads, you can do so many different spins. And this is another idea that is kind of a spin off from that that brings in um, these little carabiners. So these are new to me. I just, um, I got into them because you know you see them a lot out there. Um, in, in a lot of modern jewelry designs. And what's cool about it is you can take this long necklace or you know a bracelet and you can turn it into a double strand. So you can, this one will go is long enough to fit over my head and wear long. But if I wanted to, I could take and put a carabiner here. I'm oh, sorry, I'm off camera there. Put a carabiner here at the top and it would turn it into a double strand. And so it would look like this around the neck like that. So it'd be like a collarbone length. And another cool version is a bracelet. So this is just another long strand and I made it about 14 and a half inches long. And then I brought it together like that. It's actually just one long strand that's joined with the carabiner there at the center. And so you might need a little help putting it on um, because you know you gotta spin it and attach it like that. but. Um, just another really cool idea. You could also um, uh, join chain. If you joined a chain to this, you could make it really adaptable. So I'm going to show you how to do this stitching part, and then you guys can take it from there and just go crazy with cool designs, and um, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So um, for class today, I'm going to use, um, I was actually toying with the idea of using three different colors so I can highlight um, Basically what I've got going here is three steps. You go through all around stringing it the first time with three seed beads in between each of the gemstones. And then you come back around again, which strengthens it. And you add this embellishment. This little embellishment looks like this, this little star. And the star just pops out of that center one. So what I was thinking is I might grab different colors so we can see that really clearly. And, um, with these beads, it might look cool to just go with our usual, you know, our brights. So I'm going to grab some, let's see, let's get some turquoise going. And we get a pop of yellow. And then I'm going to bring in a pop of orange. And the reason I got the three colors again is just I want to show the structure. But of course, if you like it, you can always go with that too. So uh, for stringing materials, I used Wildfire. I used the 0.006. You can use any color. There's a bunch of new colors. I just noticed on the Michaels website, all the uh, just cool brights are out there now. So anything that you want, the thread doesn't show super much in this design, but it shows a little bit, especially if you're coming in with a lighter color. So you can see that I've used thread here, but it's it's just um, even in a transparent bead, not really the, the prominent feature. So any color really that you've got handy will work great. Um, and then of course I'm gonna be using some scissors. And I'm gonna use a size 12 beading needle just because of those multiple passes, but I think a 10 would be fine too, or an 11 if that's what you've got. But I'm using the 12s. And I'm also gonna bring in just really quick at the beginning, some chain nose pliers. And that's again, just to flatten the end of my wildfire. And um, let's see. In the handout, the gemstones that are highlighted, I just wanted to really quickly talk about the gemstones. 
I highlighted what these are, which are eight millimeter, but you're not stuck with that. You can use rondelles, you can use different sizes, anything that you'd like to use um, will work for this design. It's that versatile. I think uh, even like a little four millimeter bead would look cute. It would make the little stars more prominent. These little, little pops of stars would look a lot larger next to a smaller bead, but shown here is eight millimeter. And here's my pliers, got those out. And I'm gonna cut a length of thread that is three times the length. So um, the reason that you wanna go with three times the length is all those passes back through. And then when you're doing the little the little loops, it actually adds some length to it. So a good measure, you're gonna have a little extra, but extra is good if you just go with three times the length that you desire your finished piece to be. And so in my case, um, I went with about 95 inches to make this one. So that's about a wingspan plus one arm for me. And that's what I did. I'm gonna, for this demonstration, go a little shorter. I'm gonna make it probably um, like a bangle length so that I can finish it quickly. Uh, Cause it just takes a lot of time and it's the same step um, repeated. And so I thought a bangle would demonstrate it really nicely and make it faster. Okay, and so what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm just flattening ends here. And it makes it like, you see how it made it kind of like paper thin there, the thread, and it holds its shape like that. That's gonna make it a lot easier to get through my beading needle. And I'm treating myself to a new one today because my last one got really, really bent. I was using it a lot. But these last me a while. And there it is. So that little trick there makes it just so much easier. So anyone out there struggling with getting your needle threaded, just flatten it with the end of your pliers. You'll, you'll get it in there. And so go ahead and just fold it over. <clears throat> Once you get it through, fold over about four or five inches or so. And this is worked on a single strand. Get my gemstones going. Let's start with that. And I'm gonna start with my seed beads. Okay, and again, don't worry about the colors. I'm doing something um, for, for the demo, for clarity, that is totally optional. And all of my samples were, 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 they were just worked with a solid color. One solid color is great for this design. But so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna have three colors going eventually here. One that shows the center and then one that shows the star and then the surrounding beads will be turquoise. So we need to start with a stop bead. And what a stop bead is, is it's just one of your seed beads. Just go ahead and pick up one of those. Bring it down till you've got about seven inches left of tail. And then take your needle and come back through, back through that seed bead. And when you come back through it, just kind of hold it in place so you keep that, you know, the tail length that you originally specified for it and then pull tight and you'll get a seed bead that's, it's not knotted, you can still move it, but it's gonna keep all of the other beads from falling off of the end of your design. And it's easy to remove at the end when we go to finish. So just a little stop bead there. All right. And so in the instructions, it'll tell you to go ahead and string three seed beads. And I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna just go with a different color for my middle bead. And again, that's just so I can show you clearly the middle bead when we get to the next step. So there's three seed beads and then a gemstone. And I'm just gonna repeat that until I get a good length for a bangle. I think probably what I'll do is I'll just use up all the beads I have here. So got half of one of those double strands. And I forgot to mention earlier, but the um, the beads I used in the peach one, those are sunstone. And I do have the, uh, um, the Michael's part number for that. And I'll share that here. It's, it's 10665093. And again, that's these pretty sunstone. 
really gorgeous. Also eight millimeter. I think the eight millimeter size looks really cool with this. I have a, a strand of rondelles downstairs on my desk that I want to try with this design next so that I just didn't get to, but I would love to see it because I think the rondelles would be very gorgeous. And again, I'm just stringing size 10 seed beads, three between each gemstone until I get to the length that I'd like. And wildfire does not stretch, especially doubled as it's gonna be when we go through it again. So the length you get will stay, it won't shrink. A lot of seed bead weaving designs, you have to worry about that, but this is not one where that's a problem. There we go. It's kind of fun, actually. I like doing this kind of stringing. It just looks really pretty and kind of relaxing as a process, you know? And again, just the, if anyone's just joined, the reason I'm doing multiple colors is just to show um, kind of the structure of it or the, I'm just making it easy to see what I'm doing. But a solid color is also great. All right, so it's a little short for Bengal, but I'm gonna go with it. It'll be a little small, but we'll get the idea. So once you've got all your beads strung like this, the next step is to go ahead and remove Back here at the beginning, go ahead and remove that little stop bead. And do it carefully, you know, so you don't lose your beads. But what I find happens is if it's not going to move when I just pull like this, which for me it's moving, if it doesn't move for you, you can just kind of like push it like that, see how it's loosening. And then you can get it off that way too. Just by pulling your tail out. And go ahead and slide that bead off. That was our stop bead. And if you've moved um, a lot and you've created more tail than you want, you can just slide it around again. But what I'm gonna do here, and first I'm gonna move these out of the way, is I'm gonna go back through this side. So I'm gonna go back through these beads. And I'm gonna go through the first and the second bead. So I'm exiting from that middle bead, the yellow, and in my case, it's the yellow bead. And I did that all the way around so you can see my very clearly what my middle bead is. And so it's gonna be a little loose on you. The first three, four, even five beads, it's gonna move a little bit. That's okay, because you just take the tail and you pull on the tail on the working side. And even after you've made several stars, it'll still be possible to tighten it. So now I'm gonna get a new color out. Let me get this orange color out. And this is going to be my little star point. So pick up three of those. And again, these are all size tens. Everything's a size 10. 11s will also work. So if you've got 11s, use those. And um, so here's three. And I'm going to go back through that middle bead. Basically, what we're doing is we're looping through in a circle. So um, in the handout, it's pretty easy to see it. But we go back through the first bead, sorry, the center bead, we string the three, and then we go back through that center bead again, and then we just continue on all the way through until we reach the next center bead, make a new little point. It's that easy. Um, just remembering which direction to head is probably the only even remotely tricky part of it. But the one way to remember is just go the opposite direction from where your tail is. So here we go. I got three new beads on there. And I'm just gonna go back through my center bead again. And while I'm here, I'm gonna continue through the next size 10, through the eight millimeter. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go through the next two size 10s. And if you don't wanna do that all in one swoop, you can go through the beads individually. Whatever's easiest and makes sense for you is best. And then when you get to 
pulling these apart, if your little star point does not automatically form, like mine just kind of went all wonky like that, sometimes you have to help it. And then make sure you get the tension right there so that it's not loose. When you pull tight, you get a little point. I think it kind of looks like a little cactus flower and I'm loving this color combo. So everything about it, really cool. Well, let's just keep going. Uh, I'm gonna go all the way around because I wanna show you how to finish it. And that requires going all the way around. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. I just got three more, three more beads right there. And I'm gonna go through the center bead. And then I'm gonna continue through the next size 10, through the eight millimeter, and through the next one, next two size tens, exiting from that middle one. So super easy, super fun. Here's where I'm gonna tighten it up again. And I do actually, I tighten it after every single edition, at least for the first three or four, because it moves, it moves a lot. Here's three more. And I went through the center bead, and then I continued through the next 10, the next eight millimeter, and the next two tens. So I just keep going and just pull that tight, help it out if it's not making a little point, pull with the working and tail thread again. And just take a look, make sure you like it. And I see a gap over here. See a little gap there? I'm gonna fix that. And there we go. So don't sweat it too much um, if you have to tighten it a lot. When we get all the way back around here, oops, I'm making a knot. That's not what I want. When you get it back around here, we're going to secure it. And on a really long piece, it stops wiggling after you know, again, after four or five uh, repeats of the stars, it stops moving over here as much. So it does get easier. I'm just like of all this bead weaving stitches, the first few, the first few rows or the first few repeats are always loose. Don't let that frighten you. There we go. And it's getting a lot easier now. Danielle? Yeah. Hey, it's Carmi. Um, sidebar is very good. Not too many questions. Do me a awesome. favor. Will you walk through for the people that can't go all like do do it one bead at a time so that they can see again that you're going through the center and then the yeah. next one and the next one. Just do it slow one more time. Sure. Yeah. So here's my three new beads that I just picked up. And my thread's currently exiting from the middle of the three beads we did in our first step where we strung three between each eight millimeter. And then I'm just going back through through the center bead. And when you do that, the little three beads we added here, they'll form a little point. And that little point's gonna sit on top. It looks kind of like a little right angle weave, doesn't it? A little bit like that. It's still gonna be a little, little bit loose. And what you see me doing after each one is I just take the, the tail and I just pull. This is the tail thread over here. And this is the working side and just pull them. So everything stays tight. And then continue on through, through the 10, eight millimeter bead, and then continue through the next two size 10 seed beads to exit from the next center one. And so there I am where I need to be to make another point. And then I'm gonna pick up three of the size 10 beads, go back through. And here, I'm gonna push this down just a little, go back through the size 10 seed bead. And that time it made a nice little point without me really having to try it just went pop. It's kind of fun. All right. And so once you've got that all settled the way you like it, you just want to continue and go through the next 10, the size 10 seed bead. 
and then go through the eight and then next two tens. And pull tight. And another thing you can do is you can, when, when your uh, strand starts getting super long, you'll reach a point when you pull on the tail thread and the working thread and it'll be longer than what you have below here. When that happens, you can switch to start doing this. Just take your thumb and your finger and just kind of do that. So I'm pulling over here. Sometimes I'll like, I'll coil it around just to give me something to pull on. And then I'll use my thumbnail, just kind of tighten it. Don't go crazy pulling on it, but just make sure you don't have gaps. Although you can fix that after this. So if you do have gaps, don't worry about that either. It is something that we can fix. But again, here's three. And I'm gonna just come through. Come through the center bead here. Help it make a little point. And tighten that down. And then go through the next, basically you're just going through the next four beads. A 10 and eight millimeter. And then two of the size 10 O seed beads. Just going through those. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna just go a little bit faster just to get around, but if I have um, time at the end, I'll probably make another little segment to show everybody from start to finish one more time. So don't worry. Danielle, about I, I can tell you um, doing it slower um, helped a few people, which was perfect. Okay. Um, one, one of the comments I wanted to share with you is this design, you know, really adds a lot of detail in between semi-precious that ordinarily wouldn't be there. So instead of just a knot or just stacking them all on one string, you just one up the whole semi-precious stringing design. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm just discovering that it kind of looks like little flowers or it could become leaves. You could say like, what if these were little glass flower beads and you did this in green, then it would look like a little leaf. Yeah, those seed beads are definitely adding interest and just wonderful pops of color. And even though they're only your color options because you're teaching, we actually love the orange and yellow together. I adore it. I think it's so cute. It is says it's so um, like a little cactus. Um, I want to tell you, Peggy also mentioned she does love that there's no clasp. So for a necklace, it's great to have a design where you don't need the extra finding to. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, I totally agree, Peggy. The clasps are, um, they're great, but I love just being able to throw it over my head. And even a bangle, I don't wear bangles as much, but this is a bangle I would definitely do. And so I'm just keeping going here. Almost to the end and then I'll show you guys finishing it and we're doing so good on time I can I can start again and we can try different ideas and stuff. So here's three more and since this is the last one I'm just going to highlight again where we are. We've got our three and I'm going back through the center size 10 seed bead. I'm continuing through through the next 10 through the eight millimeter. So I only went through the 10 and then I went through the eight millimeter, right? And I've met my tail. So my tail and my working thread, they're now in the same spot. My tail is where I started stringing those first three beads and we pulled the stop bead off of it. And then here's my thread just meeting it out from outside of the uh, eight millimeter bead. So I have one more chance to tighten things up. I'm gonna go ahead and take that opportunity now. I'm gonna pull this side and then I'm gonna pull that side. And then I'm gonna do a double knot. And the double knot really does, <clears throat> I think it adds a lot of value here. Usually I wouldn't knot, but for this design, I think it needs it because it's, see that loose little spot we had? Now it's secure. And you wanna do that double. You could even do a triple knot if you want. All right, so I, Susie's so happy you're making a knot. <laughs> yeah, I did that for you, Susie. This is a 
this is a design where I feel like you definitely, you definitely want to knot that because it's, you know, you saw how it was still moving, especially in a bracelet. So it's basically done now. We just need to weave in, but I do take a lot of care weaving it in. And if you have enough, you can go around again. On a really long necklace design, you probably would have to add thread to completely go around again comfortably with a, you know, to have your length of thread be a comfortable working length to start with. But if you have a super long one, you can also weave in, weave in and knot if you'd like. You can do half hitches at some points. Um, because you've got a big eight millimeter bead with a standard drill, you can hide a knot inside of it. So lots of, there's a lot of potential here. And it's so fast to make that if you just wanted to restring it, no, you know, the knot's not that big of a deterrent in that case. Um, and so there's only one little thing I wanted to point out here. So we just made our double knot. And I remember where my tail thread and my working thread were. My working thread, it was coming out of the eight millimeter bead and my tail was headed that way out of my three ten O's. So my goal is to get my tail before I, before I trim anything. Um, and I am gonna weave in before I trim, but I wanna get these guys going in opposite directions because you never trim next to a knot. I'll probably have to put a needle on that, but I'm gonna take that one this way and I'm gonna take my working thread through the next beads here. And I'm just gonna start weaving in. And we have these nice little star points to use as turning points. And every time you turn in bead weaving, you're kind of locking in your stitch a little bit more. So there's that. I'm just gonna go a little bit slower. But all I'm doing here is just going through the beads again. And this is, of course, opportunity to make everything tight. And my goal here is to go through the seed beads and making sure that I actually go through them, not skip them, so you don't see any um, exposed thread there. But I went through those two, the eight millimeter, these two. I'm going to go through another star here. Keep going down through this one. There we go. And that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that. You could go through one more. I mean, one more wouldn't hurt. Um, but I think, you know, for demo purposes, we can see that, you know, we had a knot. And then we did a turn through and a turn and through. Maybe you do one more trim. Come over here, do the same thing. Let's get the end of this flattened. This is the tail thread. And I'm gonna grab another needle. Get that threaded. And I remember I wanted to go through the eight millimeter bead. This tail thread was already exiting from those three. That's where I left it at the start. And you can use the diagram as a hint for that because you can see like, uh, oops, moment. you can see where your tail was. You know, it was coming out of those. So we wanna bring that tail through and then just do a couple more turns with it, just like we did with the other one. So if you're here, I'm exiting from the middle one. I'm gonna do a turn. I'm just trying to get through the next one here. I went through all the beads and I'm gonna just do one more turn. And I'm gonna trim on the outside of my eight millimeter. I do like to trim there. And the reason for that, I'll explain it a little bit better um, when I get there. Again, through all those, okay. And of course you could do one more repeat of that if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do here, same thing as before, but I'm going to um, explain a little better. 
when you cut thread under tension, it kind of springs back just a little bit. And this is a really nice um, hole diameter here. You won't see the tail sticking out. But if you were to trim next to exiting like a seed bead, you might see that little tail sticking out. Seed beads are so tiny, but with this, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use gravity to help me out. I'm gonna hold, hold the thread. I've got the scissors here, push down. So I'm actually pulling up with my, I'm pulling up with this hand and I'm pushing down with my scissors, like actually pushing down on them. Trim and see the tail just disappears in there. And there's our little teeny bangle, little cactus bangle there. That was so cute. And anyone who's loving that, this is our standard zoom colors that we've been, we always kind of go to them because they stand out so nicely um, on the camera, but um, they're opaques, they're primary, like opaque. Um, this one is turquoise blue, size 10. This one is the um, opaque yellow. And this one's like a pumpkin orange, really pretty. Danielle, I'm watching the sidebar and uh, people are getting lots of ideas of where they're gonna go from here. Yay. So what if you had like a whole bunch of different size beads? It's it would same work. Thing. Same, same process would totally work, yeah. So big bead, small bead, because you're running the thread through the same way every time. Yeah, and the um, as long as there's room for the little flower in between the beads, there there'd be no limitation. But I think that even if the beads were smaller, you'd still have room because you're creating that space by putting the extra little tens on either side. Perfect. And uh, people are also very curious about what would you consider doing for matching earrings? That would be fun. Um, we've got a lot of time. I could show a couple ideas for that. I, I think I think you definitely can. Okay. Um, I have I have two schools of thought on how to make it an earring. Uh, one would be to make it a long strand, and then at the bottom you would either just kind of do like we do on fringe, where you um, you would go down, and then just skip the last bead and come back up. So that's one way. Another way is do that around a jump ring or create a loop and put a charm. But a third idea I had was to make a strand that's a little bit longer and bring it up together like that. So you've got a little loop hanging and then the ear wire would be up here and this would be the earring. So based on what sounded most interesting there, I can maybe even demo both. Danielle, I think if you could show a way um, that would allow people to either add a clasp if they wanted or an earring component, that would be perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and that way people can see if they wanted to do this with a clasp, they could. Okay, yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. Um, and once again, I'm using the wildfire 0.006. And the reason I went with 0.006 is because I'm going multiple times through a small seed bead, a 10 or an 11. You kind of want to go smaller for that. Um, but I feel like if you had the 0.008 and you wanted to try to get that through size 10, it would be okay. Um, and then any color, don't worry about the color. And Danielle, as someone who sells their jewelry, have you ever had any issues with wildfire jewelry breaking? We did have a couple questions about that. Uh, with the breaking. So it's going to break if you puncture it. And you'll know when you've punctured your thread during your stitch because it'll get really, really difficult to push your thread through it. Um, you'll also might see some white um, on the end. But it, will, it really has never broken on me unless I've done something where I have had lots and lots of passes and I've been real aggressive about it and tried to puncture it through. Um, and for, and for our, your sales, has anyone um, complained about the quality of the thread in a finished piece? Um, not through my sales. I did have one thing happen um, and I was using wildfire, but I was using a sharp bead. Um, it was a cube, you know, the cube beads that have the edges of them are kind of like a lot of silk kind of finished beads have like a sharp edge on them. Um, I had a piece that I sent into Beadwork Magazine that arrived broken because okay. of that. Um, and how, why was it broken? I can't really say. I mean, it went through vibration and being shipped and all that. And I packaged it well, but um, it does happen. It does happen. So I, Doubling it helps going double through because then two strands have to break, right? 
So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I, I know wildfire is a great thread. And so just for everyone who's, you know, looking to buy a good thread, this will be great. So just be aware when you're working with it. And of course, um, the beads that you're using, they're all round. So there mm -hmm. shouldn't be any issues with them um, possibly cutting into the thread. So I think it's a great, great um, selection that you made for this style of jewelry. Yeah, and that was a, that's a great thing to point out is that the the stones and seed beads I'm using now they are not sharp. Um, I had a thought on so broken seed beads. If you ever have one that you might be crushed with your pliers a little bit, when you break a seed bead, you've got a sharp edge of glass, and it's possible that the piece that I made that was broken, um, possibly I broke used a broken seed bead. I'm wondering if I did that. Um, don't give yourself too hard of a time about it. I mean, it happens to everybody. I think you have to replace some, sometimes you have to replace your work or repair it or, but it's, you know, I feel like it's strong enough that I, I do rely on it for things I'm going to sell. Thanks, Danielle. Appreciate that. So I'm going ahead and starting with the stop beat again, uh, just, uh, for the beginning, um, because I haven't totally ironed out how I want to end it, but. I put the stop bead on and I'm just going back with our same process here with a three. So there's three size tens, eight millimeter bead, gemstone bead, any bead. Go back through. And just decide how long you want it to be. I'm still kind of trying to eyeball like how long would I want it? I'm thinking definitely this would just be a single strand hanging. So um, if you're going to put a charm, probably four would be a good number. But without a charm, maybe five. And I don't have a charm sitting here, but I can grab one, or I can just show it without. Or we could make one. Yeah, let's do four. OK, so a couple of things we could do here. Let me grab an ear wire. I have candy or the um, uh, lever backs that we used in our most recent class. So I've got those here. And I'm just going to go through it. Um, if you're using any kind of ear wire, they're all going to have some kind of loop. And what I'm thinking is I'll go, because it might be cute to just go and add an extra center bead. So. There's two size tens. And I'm just weighing this. You could you can change this up for any counts you'd like. And I might not like it, and I might pull it out and try something different. But there's another kind of mirroring what I did there. So, so far, I've got a 10 and then a different color 10 and then my ear wire. And I want to see what happens if I just go back through my bead. if I like it or not. Well, pretty cute. You could even get away with one. I like the two though. And I'm gonna come down through the next two here. And then the same thing as before, I'm just gonna go ahead and get three of these. A cute little pop there. Exit from the center of the next little gap there. So there's the center one there. And just uh, want to share a thought that I'm having. It wasn't where I was going with this, but wouldn't that look cute with a charm here? But if we, you know, we kind of connected this top part and then the little charm hang, hung here from the center and that was the earring. So there's one idea. But this would, um, what I'm doing here would work for clasping because instead of an ear wire, that could have been a lobster claw, right? 
and then we will get a chance to reinforce it. We would just make a turn here at the bottom and then come back up and reinforce it. Another thing you could do is in the moment while you're here, after you make this, you could turn around and come back and reinforce it. So there's a couple ways you could, you could make that for a clasp. I would probably go with the first option, which is going all the way through and then coming back. All right, so now I'm here at the bottom and I got to decide what I'm going to do. Um, I made a strand, a little strand here. That's really cute. And let's think here. I really like the idea of putting a charm on it. That appeals to me a lot. I just pulled the stop bead off of my tail. And what if we did this? Um, idea one. Actually go through all those beads. I'm going through it in the same direction. So I'm exiting from the bottom here and I'm, I'm literally just playing, but coming from the bottom here, we can make another little point. That would be cute. And that could be done a lot of ways. Like you could um, skip the addition of these three and just put the little point here at the bottom or I'm kind of wishing I'd taken that turquoise bead off so it would have symmetry with going from turquoise to yellow to orange. It's not too late to do that. Let me just see what this looks like really quick. I'm going back through the beads and I went back through the eight millimeters so I have something to hold on to. I pull it, help it make a point. See what happens. All right, so there's, there's one way. And of course we would need to get rid of all of the extra thread by weaving it in. But that- I know. Some of your, your regulars are going down a path. They're wondering about putting a second Pico on the other side. Oh yeah, totally you could do that. And it would give you something to do if you wanted to make another pass through your work to strengthen it just a little bit more. So it would give you another little interest. You could do a different color. For spring, I love like, like flourishy. Um, like almost like a coraling stitch. If you've ever done a little bit of coraling, you could have, you know, things like that. But what I feel like here, because um, I feel like it needs just a little something here at the bottom and I like my little Pico, but because I'm using eight millimeter beads, what I really wanna do is I wanna give it something extra. Um, I'm wondering if we could turn an eight millimeter bead into a charm. Let's see. And of course, just to uh, really talk quickly to finishing, if you wanted to finish this as a clasp, all you would need to do is duplicate what we did here by adding another turquoise tenno, 11 tenno, go through lobster claw, and then just come back through. I would take that bead off to make it match. So let me know if you have any questions about that, but um, let's see, what else could we do? Danielle, for a home decor um, option, it would be great on a string for chandelier. Strung for chandelier. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like as a sun catcher, maybe with a little like crystal at the bottom or, oh yeah, that would be cute. Cindy wants to know if you put a pico on the bottom without the tenos. Yeah, let's see that. That's what I was just thinking is that would look a lot better. And it kind of finishes it in a way that looks symmetrical with what we've done here. So I'm just gonna grab those three. So in a way it kind of turns that last 10 bead into a charm. And then they're gonna do the other side. <laughs> that is so cute, look at that. Good suggestion, yeah. Cindy. I'm wishing I made it a smidge longer because it's a little short, I want it to be. I want like two more. But yeah, that, and then of course, if you wanted to add a charm, you could just duplicate what we did here and then it would be a jump ring charm or a jump ring through your chain for the other side of your clasp closing option. Um, do you guys want to see me putting some extra little stars? Let's try that. We have time, right? We're good. If um, you can. Yeah. Okay, let's go back through. Let's just see what it looks like with the Pico on the other side. And Danielle, then I'm gonna ask you, would you mind just showing again how you added the clasp? Because I think it would be nice if they could definitely finish it. 
Yeah, actually, why don't I show that now? Because once I go back up here, I'm just kind of stuck. Exactly, here. you're gonna yeah, lose let's it. Let's do that first. Okay, I'm gonna come back out. I'm gonna take my needle off really quick and just pull this out. Okay, so let's say this was like a long and pretend this is like a lobster claw over here um, or a chain. At this end, here's the tail thread. I took the stop bead off of it. There's no beads here yet. I'm going to get my needle back on here. And I'm going to go with one of these jump rings. And for jump rings, if your jump ring isn't totally closed yet, just go ahead and make sure that it's closed before you do this part so your thread doesn't go through it. I also really like using chain that has the like soldered when I'm doing stitching through. Or you could do wire guardian. A wire guardian would also work. Okay, so let's let's mimic what we did on this side. Let's go uh, turquoise, and yellow, and then this is a big jump ring, so it doesn't really matter, but we'll go through that. And then another yellow and a turquoise. Come back through the bead. And that would finish it. And then and alternatively, you could just go through from this bead right here, from the yellow one, you could go through a wire guardian, come on the other side, and then down through the side with two more. If you're going to use a wire guardian, giving it that little bit of air with the seed beads will help um, make it fit against, you know, the single hole bead here. But there's a couple options, kind of the sky's the limit there. Now let's make those little extra, extra dots on the side. So I went through all the beads here and then I'm just going through the center, the center one. So exiting just from the center here. Three more. All right, oh, that's really cute. Now that looks like a daisy, you know, like a daisy chain. Doesn't it kind of look like, I'll keep going so we can get a visual, but it looks like a daisy chain to me now. And I'm kind of wishing instead of the turquoise, I'd done orange, because then it would be like a circle around it. Okay, so I was able to get through all those in one swoop there. So I'm where I need to be to make the next one. But yeah, I'm just looking at that. How cute is that? And if I'd done yellow beads instead of the turquoise, we'd have what looks like a little daisy chain in between gemstones. And that would actually be really cute. If I'd thought of that before, that would probably be the class truth. <laughs> I just didn't think of it. It's a really good idea, guys. All right. Almost made it through that B. I'm going to just make one more trip there. There's that one. Okay, three more. And I'm just being really careful that I don't puncture my thread. And now I'm back over here with a chance to reinforce it. It's also really handy. And 
We come through the ear wire here. And back down. So I would, I would actually come all the way back through this since I've got thread. And since um, my bottom jumpering is not reinforced, but with just one loop through it. But keeping in mind that I've got my tail thread. So you've always got your tail thread on the starting side to use as a way to reinforce that connection here. But because I have enough, and this is such a short design, I would probably bring the rest of my working thread all the way back down through and then loop through and do the do a knot with this one. So I think I can show that really quick. I do have one bead down here that's a little tight. I might switch to my other needle that I set aside. It seemed like it was going through a little bit easier. There we go. Almost there, just gotta go through three more. And a trick for um, working with thickness is just um, give it a wiggle. So when you get your needle going through a seed bead, I'm doing this kind of like spinning motion to just kind of make sure that I'm not hitting thread. And if you're not hitting thread, you will notice it will just glide right through pretty smoothly and it won't break your seed bead. There we go, now I'm where I wanna be. And before I go any further, I wanna take a look, where's my tail? It's coming out of the eight millimeter bead. And so is my working thread. So what I wanna do is go around the horn here. I'm gonna go through the seed bead here. And the next ones and the jump rings just kind of moving around over the top of all this stuff here. So I'm just going through all those seed beads again. And the other side. From here, I'm going to knot with my tail. So that's how I would finish this one. And then I would put a really cute charm on the bottom here. Danielle, you've been a great sport because it wasn't an earring class and it wasn't a class with findings, <laughs> but you certainly gave everyone so many more options for this design. And so really appreciate that. Oh, thanks. Um, That's wanted, really fun. <laughs> we do have a few new people. So I wanted to know if you had handy um, a guardian. Yeah, I do have those handy. Um, Not when you to show it so that they know what to look for when they go shopping. Yeah, this is how they're sold. Um, they're sold at Michael's on the findings wall. You'll find them over next to where like the toggles and the head pins and stuff are. And they look like this. They look like little uh, metal rainbows. And let's see, there's no visual here for putting them on, but the way that they're put on is you just go through, or actually there is a visual just inside there. And it's it's in this photograph, it is shown with a crimp, but it works great with thread. And when I work with wire guardians and stitch designs, I give them a seed bead on either side to go through. Um, and it kind of helps them taper down to where both strands can then go through a single bead, like you see here. But I would, I would, for example, um, from here, I would string at least one size 10. I think I would go with two and then go through one side of the wire guardian over the rainbow through the well, down to the other side. And then I would string two more tens and come through my eight millimeter bead at that point. And that gives you a really great finish because then you can come along and you can very securely lock any jump ring to the end of your design. And it gives you the ability to sw keep switching your, you know, switch your clasp, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah Danielle, you did great for time today. I, I wish you had time to read the sidebar. Um, so many people love this class and uh -huh. uh, the possibilities that, um, that, that, and the extra things you showed. We really appreciate the matching earrings and the extra side. So you're, if you want to look up, you can see um, some of oh, the great yeah, comments that are coming up. And I didn't know if you wanted to give them the sneak peek to next week. Yeah, yeah. So next week I have on my ears <laughs> and I'll put them on the mat here for you. Um, so these are little Celtic knot fringe earrings. 
and they're so pretty and they're easy. They don't take very long to make. Um, here's the handout. And what I did with, um, with the handout is I've got it outlined inside for um, showing the counts that I used, but I wanted to point out that you could make these different lengths if you wanted to. And this stitch would work no matter what. You could make the lengths work. At the end, you just kind of take these four strands and you, in a way, you kind of braid them around the super duo. But it's really super easy, just, uh, you know, fringe off a little base of super duos. So super fun design. And um, they look really cute uh, when you're wearing them. They're simple, but they stand out still at the same time, but they're not like, I wouldn't call them statement, but they're definitely, you know, they, they really add to, um, they just kind of add to your outfit. And they're really cute for the season. So that's next week on Friday. And then we're into April. So um, I need to make a board for April, which I will do. And um, I'll also be sharing that um, on social media too. So, and speaking of that, um, when you guys create your beautiful jewelry pieces, we really get excited to see them. If you tag, make it with Michaels and John Bede, we, um, we get to see everything that you guys have come up with and it makes our day. So um, I just wanna wish you guys, I wanna wish you guys a great weekend and happy beading and um, lots of creativity. Oh, thanks Valerie. <laughs> Thank you too. Thank you for being here. <laughs> You're so awesome. And so yeah, yeah, just um any questions, of course, you can find me on you can find me on Instagram. I'm pretty good about my Instagram direct message. You can find me on Facebook. Um, and I just look forward to seeing what you guys create. So have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye.